Well, we are live. I'll wait here a few minutes to get uh, some people started. We are live. <clears throat> just want to wait just for a few seconds here and make sure that uh, people see that we're live and ready to jump on. <clears throat> We've got one. We got two. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> you are watching. Good. This is going to be uh, a uh, nightly occurrence at 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to be uh, doing a nightly devotion. I'm going to say these announcements a couple times as people are uh, jumping on and jumping on board. Uh, so if you get tired of the announcements, uh, we get tired of them on Sunday mornings too, but you, you have to do them. You have to get people uh, knowing that... Uh, that uh, things are things are moving along here at the church. <clears throat> I brought some water with me. Just had my dinner. Hopefully everyone's eating their dinner. So uh, this past Sunday, uh, I had uh, the best surprise that I have had uh, in a long time. I'm. You can ask Pastor Andrea. I'm a pretty difficult person to to surprise. Uh, but I was completely surprised this past Sunday morning when uh, 92 plus cars, someone did account uh, that did account, 92 plus cars showed up this past Sunday morning and completely surprised me. I was utterly uh, uh, humbled and surprised that so many of you pulled in and came in blaring your horn and uh, coming in and completely surprising me, <clears throat> and I was uh, just humbled and flabbergasted. And uh, the good thing is, and Jerry Hammerlin will attest to this, uh, I didn't even just shed one tear. No, just just kidding. I I shed more than one tear. I shed a lot. So it was just so good to see uh, some of you, some of you are saying, there's Tamara Mancier saying that she had fun on Sunday. Uh, it was great to see. I saw Bill Kirkland there uh, this past Sunday driving by. Uh, hey, one of my good friends, Eddie Azari from, all the way from New York is watching right now. What's up, my bro? Good to see you. Miss you. Just want, uh, just want to do a couple shout outs of people looking. Hey, Casey, good to see you. Valerie, how are you? Courtney, I'm glad you loved it. I loved it as well. So many of us. So just, uh, again, a huge, huge thank you to all of you who got in your cars and came over this past Sunday morning and surprised me. I think uh, it was a couple um, devotions ago where we talked about uh, uh, there's nothing more sad to a pastor than seeing an empty parking lot. And uh, what was really cool was that the parking lot was completely full this past Sunday, and I loved it. Now, just so everyone's clear, uh, Kevin Keel, our head of uh, safety team here, he did call ahead and let the police know and other first responders that we were going to be doing this, and uh, they said they were absolutely fine with it. So just in case anyone was wondering, and no, we shouldn't be out and doing stuff. The police were well aware of it, and everything was good. So, so again, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of a pastor's heart uh, that uh, you came out this past Sunday. It was, as Holly is saying right now, Holly Keel, Sunday was amazing. I absolutely loved it, so absolutely true. <clears throat> and some of you made signs and did all kinds of, okay, enough about that. I, I just want to let you know, too, by way of uh, uh, just quick update, Pastor um, uh, Bob and Ruth, my parents, are en route. They have not hit any traffic, oddly enough, but they are uh, en route. They're traveling back to Michigan. They should be here on Wednesday and uh, just be praying for them that they would stay safe as they're coming back, but they will be here on Wednesday or should be. They they called me today and said there are no rest stops open anywhere. So apparently uh, to stop spreading corona, uh, there also aren't any places to go to the bathroom. So be praying for them and safe travels for them. Just want to let you know 
that you need to like the Facebook page, uh, Lake Point's Facebook page. I'm not on my personal um, Facebook page, so a lot of you are friends with me. Uh, and so you know that different notifications are coming up, but you need to go to Lake Point's Facebook page, the one that you're on right now, but and uh, like that. And then go on to your Facebook page and tell all of your friends if they want to know uh, what's happening and what's going on with Lake Point to uh, like the Facebook page because that's where you will see everything. So coming up this Sunday... Uh, by way of some more announcements, <clears throat> this Sunday, April 5th, I'll be teaching on the Sacrament of Communion. I'm going to be teaching on Communion. It's also the first uh, Sunday of the month, and if you've been going to Lake Point long enough, you know that this coming Sunday, the first Sunday of the month, we always take Communion. And uh, we will be taking Communion this coming Sunday, I will be doing it live. Now, the service itself is going to be pre-recorded like we've been doing, the worship and those things, but uh, we'll be doing three different live times of communion together, okay? So 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock, I'm going to be doing communion on our Facebook page live so that you'd be able to take communion with me. Now, let me take a drink. <clears throat> You'll be doing communion live this Sunday, but there are two ways that you can do this. Uh, there are some people that would rather me take communion for them as a stand-in for the church, uh, especially uh, if you would rather not uh, uh, get sacraments yourself or uh, go out and um, get any of the elements. Or this week when you're out doing your shopping only, not going anywhere else, but doing your shopping, uh, you can pick up uh, some bread, some grape juice, or maybe you have those things at your house, or maybe on Sunday when you see uh, that, that we're doing it, just grab something to remind you of communion and what communion is and the elements. But this coming Sunday, uh, April 5th, I will be giving communion uh, three different times, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. So if you want to go out and buy the sacraments, uh, the, the grape juice and uh, the bread, the elements, I should say, they're not the sacraments to us, but the, the, the elements, you can go out and buy those, or if you have those at your house already, you have bread, whatever, <clears throat> however you want to do it, or if you'd rather be, uh, if you'd rather me take communion for you, uh, I will be taking it all three times uh, as a stand-in, as the leader of our church, in a symbolic way of digging it. Uh, I just see T Tina Berrier is going to be making her own bread. How cool is that? Making her own bread uh, for communion. Good. Take that communion on Sunday. So this Sunday, April 5th, three different times, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. I'll be live all three times that you can take communion with me or I will take it for you as the leader of the church. Had a great meeting today <clears throat> via the internet with uh, the PLT. I was very encouraged. It was a very good meeting. Uh, the, the, the leadership team uh, are just doing a fantastic job and really here to support and be a part of what the church is doing in prayer um, and in fasting. Some PLT members are getting words and are giving to me the words. Oh, uh, I see that Olivia and Gabe are on. So I just want to do a shout out as their dad to them. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Livy. <clears throat> So tonight I want to uh, look at our devotion. So don't forget every night at 7 o'clock right here on Lake, Book's, uh, Lake Point's Facebook page, Lake, Book, Lake Point's Facebook page, we're going to be doing a devotion. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer. We're looking at the Lord's Prayer. And you can follow along with the devotion. In fact, uh, if you, uh, you can either look at it now or you can look at it later, depending if you're on your phone or just grab someone else's phone. Go to the Version app, the same one that you use to take notes on Sunday mornings. Uh, but go to the Version app and look up a journey from worry to confident hope. 
a journey from worry, from uh, a journey from worry to confident hope. It's by N. T. Wright, who is a pastor of a church and a theologian out in England. N. T. Wright is someone I've discovered uh, recently. Have been reading a few of his books. Really like what he uh, has to say. He's inspired uh, the Easter sermon that we've got coming up in the next coming couple weeks. But uh, a journey from worry to confident hope. And it's really giving us a pattern uh, of prayer. It's giving us a, a, a way to pray, a pattern of prayer. Historically, we've called this the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but really, it's not the Lord's Prayer. He, he, he prayed in his own way. This prayer is actually our prayer. It's a way that Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. It became a pattern of prayer for themselves. So I'd like to look at the Lord's Prayer. Most of you have it memorized, um, but some of you may not. <clears throat> so I'm reading in uh, Matthew chapter 6, 5 through 15, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 5. Uh, Matthew 6, 15 through 15, verse 5, starting here. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corner of the streets that they may be seen by people. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, <clears throat> go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Here's the part you probably know. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. What I love about uh, this, this scripture, and it's something I was in Bible school, uh, and I heard a guest speaker came in, and uh, he said to us uh, as students, Bible students, the disciples came to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray. What I love about that is, is because <clears throat> maybe maybe not you, but me, I need a way in order to pray. We, we say this a lot. We've probably said this a lot right now. Thoughts and prayers. How many of you could be accused of saying thoughts and prayers? My thoughts and prayers are with you. But then when you get away or by yourself, you're like, well, how, how do I actually pray? Well, you're in a pretty good, uh, you're in a pretty good uh, company because the disciples themselves, those who walked around with Jesus, came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Prayer is something that is not just naturally something we do. Prayer is actually taught, and therefore it can be practiced, and therefore it's something that we have to do on a regular basis to get better at. You don't have to start off by being a fantastic prayer. In fact, what Jesus even says is be careful that you don't become the fantastic prayer that everyone's like, oh, can you pray for us? Oh, can you be the one who's, who's always constantly saying these prayers because you have the most wonderful prayers? He's actually saying don't, don't pray like that. Don't pray so repetitiously that you get so good at it that you actually forget what you are saying. But it is something that is taught. We often don't even know what to pray, especially when times are tough right now. People have come to me and they, not come to me, no, not social distancing, distancing. They've actually asked me to pray. Can you pray for this pastor? Can you do, as if I have some direct connection, 
I don't have any direct connection any more than you do as a person of prayer. Because it doesn't matter how clean your life is or what you have done. See, doing something, that goes back to doing. I don't have any better connection than you do to the same Father. The difference is, is that I am a shepherd and I am leading people to the same Messiah. But my connection to him is just the same as anybody else's. Anyone can approach God with a prayer because of what Jesus Christ has done. So when we are in tough times, I, I myself can find myself struggling with what do I pray? What do I say? How do I, how do, I do this? When the worries of life kind of close in around us, these well-known words, the ones from the prayer, will serve as a compass or will serve as a guide and they will guide us to the truth and teach us to pray with confident expectation. That's important there, that we have a confident expectation. The Lord's Prayer is a confident prayer. It's very confident. And we need to be confident when we ourselves are praying that first he is hearing us and he is going to be answering us not answering us in what the way we want but the way that he his will be done <clears throat> but the lord's prayer also does something else it's also summarizing and catch this really good it's summarizing christ's entire ministry the lord's prayer when you sit down and you break it down, you can filter it and see how it summarizes clearly Christ's entire ministry. We see his agenda for the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God uh, is going to come to earth as it is in heaven. And it serves as an anchor and a pattern for our own lives. And when we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we pray it, we are recalling the events from Christ's life and from his ministry. And in effect, in effect, we are declaring that we too want to be a part of his mission. This helps us to turn our focus from worry and toward his will. From worry to his will. Now, I know once again, I like to preach on things that are easier said than done, and most of you know that. But it's something I also have to learn myself and do myself. It is very easy to worry. Being a worrier is a very easy thing to do. It's not easy to turn your worry toward him for his will. But nevertheless, easy or not, it's something we must do. It's something we need to do for our own sakes, for our own sanity, for our own lives. And this is what, this is what the Lord's Prayer is. It's, it's a Jesus-shaped prayer. Now, I, I took that from N.T. Wright. I love that. But it is a Jesus-shaped prayer. With it, we draw near to our Father God. With that Jesus-shaped prayer, we can draw closer to God, the one who cares and provides and protects and remains deeply interested in our concerns, his purpose and the church. Did you know that God is deeply uh, invested and interested in our concerns? Sometimes it feels as though he's not there, that he's distant, or that he's not uh, available, but that just isn't true. By saying that he's not there, or that he's distant, is lessening, it's, it's diminishing what Christ did on the cross. When Christ was on the cross, cru was crucified and died on the cross, that gave us full access to Father God. That gave us full access to God, the God of the universe. He's never far. He's never, uh, never leaves us alone. It may be a feeling. It may be a feeling, but it is not the truth because of what Jesus did for us at the cross. So just like Elder Jim Murphy is saying, leave it at the cross. I will reiterate that when you have worry, leave it at the cross in this 
Jesus-shaped prayer. Here's what N.T. Wright says. Here's what Pastor Wright says. Here is our confident hope. Jesus inaugurated the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And one day, thy kingdom come will arrive in all of its fullness. The day of the Lord will be when all things in creation are fully and finally put right. But until that day, we know that evil, sin, and destructive power are still forces that must be reckoned with in our lives on a daily basis. Our worries prompt us to pray for provision, deliverance, and safety in the middle of it all. It all begins with the hopefulness of drawing near to God in prayer as our Father and ends with the confidence of his kingdom, power, and glory forever. Forever. The confidence of his kingdom, power, and glory. There are so many things in our lives that can be destructive, and, and we know this. Uh, we, can, we can be worried right now about our jobs and about what we are doing, and when is this going to end, and they keep pushing the deadline to another, another time. Now it's, we know, that to the end of April, and <clears throat> when is this going to end? I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you. I, that's the uh, $10 billion question. But until then, until we know the answer, we pray the Lord's Prayer in faith. We pray the, pray the prayer that he has given us in, in faith because we have to know, we have to know that we are not helpless. We are not helpless. And hear me when I say this. By staying in your home and doing the social distancing, that makes us helpful by praying for people by calling friends that we haven't talked to in years to see how they are doing all of that is helpful all of that is helpful because that does not then make us helpless it help makes us helpful we are not helpless in this situation i don't like when people say well all we can do now is pray that is not all we can do now as if it's the last resort. That should be our first resort. That's the first thing that we do. Now you got me preaching and you're not even here. Okay, so let's move on. But we have to pray in faith. We have to know that we are not helpless in this. Real and lasting change is possible by the Spirit's power. By the Spirit's power. We declare that the work that Jesus had begun in our lives and in the world will continue even when things get gloomy or uncertain. May we find rest and renewal today as he draws closer to us and we draw closer to him through prayer. Through prayer. So, my challenge for us this week, and if, if you're just jumping on, make sure that you go uh, to the Version Bible app and you look up a journey from worry to confident hope. Because this is, this is uh, the devotion that I worked through and I, this is a way that we can all uh, be together and doing a devotion. So I'm hoping that anyone who's watching this or if you can tell everybody to go to a journey from worry to confident hope with uh, Pastor N.T. Wright. Uh, uh, he's out of England. He's uh, out there. And then we can follow along in this together in this devotional every single night. So I would ask this question, and this is the question that he asks us to consider. On what specific events from Jesus' life and ministry might you reflect on when you are praying the Lord's Prayer? What are some specific events in Jesus' life, Jesus' life and ministry that you reflect on during the Lord's Prayer? And how does this help us with the things you worry about? We need to be reflecting. We need to be praying the Lord's Prayer. And then... Not to be outdone, we just finished our series, Live Out Loud. <clears throat> Here's your Live Out Loud challenge. Pray the Lord's Prayer 
throughout the day tomorrow as the Spirit leads, and then even sit down and, and, and journal uh, your thoughts and any new insights that you might have. None of us can say, we don't have time to journal anymore, Pastor. We have all these great excuses. We, we don't have any anymore. We don't have these good excuses. We can actually do this. But pray the Lord's Prayer. Someone on the thread here just said, when you go and wash your hands, pray the Lord's Prayer while you're washing your hands. Uh, that's not a bad idea at all. Uh, make sure that you're washing your hands. Um, make sure that you're showering, too. I, I, I think the command is not just to wash your hands. It's, it's really to wash all of yourself, so make sure you do that. But there you go. There's a dad joke. Someone was asking for a dad joke. There you go. There you, you got it. But this week, we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer the whole time. We'll be looking at the Lord's Prayer throughout the week. So follow along, <clears throat> A Journey from Worry to Confident Hope, a new version. And every night, I'll have a different, uh, different um, devotional piece from that. This is day one. There'll be a couple days i got to double up so we can be done on Friday. And then let me just finish up with these announcements before I pray. Don't forget, uh, this coming Sunday, uh, we will be doing communion all together live. I'll be doing it three times, uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. So you can do it with me if you want to go out and get the elements, uh, or, or I can do it uh, in place of you if you want, but three times. And I'll have all this information on uh, Facebook. So what I would like to do is if you can, uh, <laughs> my words are coming back to me here on the thing. Uh, Holden Hope said, wash your tongue and watch your tongue. Very good. Holden, Holden was watching. He was watching uh, the message. Very good, Holden. I love it. Uh, how I'd like to close up tonight in prayer is by praying the Lord's Prayer together. So if you know the Lord's Prayer, uh, you can go ahead and pray it with me right now. Um, uh, but if you don't know it, you may want to look it up. It's the one that I'll be reciting is found in Matthew chapter 6. And it's the Lord's Prayer. And just so everyone knows, I say trespasses instead of debtors. That always seems to throw people off. But. So let's go ahead and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from evil. Don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. So starting tomorrow night, I will be back here at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, this is going to be our regular routine for this week. Hopefully I will see you here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, 7.30 or so, right around this time. Uh, if you could, uh, before we go, I'm going to leave this running for a little bit longer. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, if you could uh, send to me on this thread what you feel comfortable with sharing in terms of prayer requests. And I will collect all these. I will give these to uh, the elders of the church. If you put prayer requests on here and who you'd like to see prayer for, uh, roll those through uh, during our devotion. I'll get those to uh, our elders. If you'd rather not put them here for uh, everyone to see, you can always uh, put them on. Um, you can send them to me personally. You can still email the office. Uh, Reba is still working diligently, mostly from home, um, but she uh, will take all your prayer requests and we still put them on the, uh, the prayer chain. So thank you all for joining me tonight. I would pray that you would be blessed and that you would be healthy and that you would be safe and continue, continue to, to move in what God has from you. Amen. Amen. Talk to you soon. Good night.